gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. B. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate the panelists coming in. Um, you know, the sad part about all this that we're seeing play out, uh, and Congressman McClintock, you mentioned it, you're only as good as if you enforce it. Now, everybody's up in orange, ar arms about Title 42 ending. They haven't, since this administration took office, they haven't been enforcing it anyway. The numbers show that. Um, I've been to the border like I think most of y'all. It is sickening to see what's happening. Uh, it's sickening to see uh, the children that are getting raped. It's, ch it's sickening to see the fentanyl that came into South Carolina, and I would add we're all border states now, that could have killed half of the state of South Carolina, which is 2.4 million people. We've got a total population of 5.2. It's sickening to see... Uh, the farmers we met with when we went to the border, fences are being cut, walls are being built to protect themselves. Uh, to, to hear the farmer plead with us, please do something. It's sickening to see law enforcement who we met with this week who don't know who in the world they're stopping when illegals uh, are committing crimes in this country. The blood is on the hands of this administration for letting this go. And it cannot be said any clearer and to, to even try to make the argument that during the Trump administration, the numbers were not down. He was building 900 miles of wall and, and going to have designated points of entry. Uh, if walls don't work, take the locks off your house, folks. Uh, take the doors down. Let everybody in. It doesn't work. And Mr. McClintock, like you says, like you, you mentioned, uh, the schools that are being overrun now, the, the emergency rooms that are being overrun all over this country, uh, it's sickening to see that no, that, that uh, we could solve it, but they're just not going to do it. This administration is devoid of any uh, reason. They're doing it for one thing, votes. And that uh, was shown in New York City when they're giving them licenses. It was shown when we were visiting. Uh, they were getting on airplanes. Where was the COVID vaccine, vaccine uh, card that the illegals had? They had none. Uh, and so... The NGOs that are supporting this, it's sickening to see this. Uh, and the, the issue that all of us face, how are you going to walk this back? How do you walk this back in America? You can't unless you line buses up all over the country and deport people back. And I, I'm sick and tired of hearing, you know, you, you have dreamers. You have people who are valid who want to be here. That's true, but you verify it. And that's what this administration is not going to do. Um, Mr. McClintock, from an enforcement standpoint, and I, it, it, let's say this bill passes the House and the Senate in a perfect world, uh, where's the enforcement part of this? We've got another year of horror under this administration. Where's the order going to come to enforce anything that's in this bill before us? It's a blessing sometimes and a curse sometimes, but in a democracy, you get the government you vote for. This is the government that the people of the United States voted for. If it turns out it's a government that is not to their liking, they have the opportunity to, to rectify that in the next election. Um, I, I am convinced this is a deliberate policy. It will continue as long as the people responsible for it remain in office. Uh, and um, uh, if you want to know why all of this is happening, uh, this is exactly, if, if you voted for the, for the Democrats, this is exactly what you voted for. And if that surprises you, you weren't paying very close attention because they made it very clear this was, was their intention. So ultimately, it will be up to the American people. Our job is to provide the, the, the laws that can be used uh, to, uh, to restore the integrity of our borders as history screams this warning at us that countries that either cannot or will not enforce their borders simply aren't around very long. Without in, uh, uh, enforcement of our immigration laws, we have no immigration laws. Without immigration laws, we have no borders. And if we have no borders, we are no longer a country. We are simply a vast international territory between Canada and Mexico. And that is what the Democrats, I believe, have deliberately imposed on our country, and it's going to be up ultimately to the American people to stop them. And it's sad to say it's probably going to take another 9-11 that will happen. Well, that's what worries me the most of all. 1.5 million known gotaways. Now, th again, those are the people we actually saw crossing the border illegally. We know nothing about them at all. But we do know this. 
when this administration unconditionally surrendered Bagram Air Force Base, uh, uh, we had the Parwan military uh, uh, detention facility there. Uh, it was housing more than 5,000 most dangerous uh, terrorists uh, on the planet. We know where one of those 5,000 went. Ten days later, one of those 5,000 went to Abbey Gate at uh, Kabul Airport and detonated a bomb that killed 13 U.S. Marines. We don't know where the other 5,000 are. We do know we've been able to intercept 100 or so known terrorists at the border. We don't know how many are among the 1.5 million gotaways. I am afraid there will come a day uh, when we will suffer uh, a coordinated attack by terrorists who come through our southern border during this, uh, this period uh, uh, of time. Um, and it, uh, the, the other thing I worry about a lot is we are introducing the, the violent uh, uh, cartels uh, into our major cities. How long will it be before we start seeing the kind of gun battles break out in our, in our American cities that have become routine in Mexico? Well, when you, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's just when. When you, let every, when you don't have a border, I, exactly. uh, it's not a matter of if, it's just when. Mr. McCall and, and Congressman Green, you all both uh, on the national security front, how dangerous is what what this administration is doing has been doing? Where where uh, how do you put a figure on what is most likely going to um, uh, affect this country for a long time? How, how many more three thousand deaths are we going to have to take before we uh, finally wake up? And, and and this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This is an American issue. Now, and thanks for the question. I was a counterterrorism federal prosecutor in Texas with the border. I've uh, been dealing with this issue for well over 20 years and uh, chairman of Homeland. But when you have 5 million encounters and 5 million people potentially in this country where, that have no legal status, where they're, they're manipulated with trafficking, um, with uh, you know, the women get trafficked, the, the men go to gangs. Um, Mr. McClintock mentioned the numbers on potential terrorists. When I chaired Homeland, that was the stat I asked every, every week I had my, my classified briefings. How many special interest aliens got in? How many on the terror watch list? Because that was, that was the number that uh, was the biggest threat. Biggest threat. It has a financial toll that's beyond uh, belief. Uh, but then the fentanyls. The human toll on that, 100,000 people dead. That's more than Vietnam over 20 years. 100,000 people, and that number's climbing. It's coming in from China, going through Mexico, and it's going all throughout the United States. When you don't have any accountability and you have a wide open border, you don't know who's coming in, you're really asking for it. Not to mention the crime rate, which we're going to see soar as a result of this because they're not going to have any legal status. So what do you do living in the shadows? I mean, it's, it's, very, it's, not, it's very common sense, as you're pointing out, the dangers this, this is it has such a threat to the United States, not only from a criminal standpoint, but a national security standpoint and a drug standpoint. Um, and if we don't get control over this soon, I'm afraid we, it'll be hard to turn back. Well, it, we've got a oh, Congressman Green. Sure, sure. I, you know, the, the 1.5 million gotaways, the known number, uh, you can add on to that what uh, Chief Ortiz believes is another 20 percent where they get are hits at the um, fiber optics in the ground where they know people are coming across, but they're not getting their eyes on, so they don't count those as gotaways. They're, they actually have another term for it, but he thinks that number is uh, another 20 percent, so another 300, so 1.8 million. And it's interesting right now, if you turn yourself into Customs and Border Patrol, you're going to get released into the country. They're not deporting. They're not, they allowed the return agreements to expire with the other countries. So, I mean, you're good. so if you're intentionally avoiding CBP, it begs the question, you know, what's the intent? Uh, we talked about the videos earlier of the drug, you know, uh, packs of, of fentanyl coming in, et cetera. What concerns me more is we, when we talk to the sector chiefs, uh, and, and we're gathering testimony from them now, we have in, for example, the Del Rio sector, 25 to 35 Chinese nationals age 25 to 35 with known associations to the PLA being released into the country every day. Now, that's in one sector a day. Uh, 
You think about the Chinese spy balloon that every, pretty much everybody in the country was frustrated that that was allowed to traverse the country. When we get to the bottom of the numbers of people with affiliations with the PLA coming into the United States and just being released into the country, uh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. That's an upcoming uh, uh, planned hearing because of a whistleblower that came to us. Um, I, think, I think people are going to really be shocked at what's really happening at our southern border. But uh, it's our intention to shine a light on that over the coming months. Well, I'll just uh, close with this. Um, <clears throat> again, to try to walk this back, I don't know how you do it. Uh, if, with, with what's going on now, we've five million that we think, but more or less well, before this administration is over with, uh, we'll have 12 to 15 million. Uh, it's like the airline pilot told me off record. <clears throat> he said, we're struggling. We can't catch everybody. That's, that is most likely going to cause another 9-11. And then what will, what will this, what will, what, what will be our reaction? Uh, and I think this is a good bill. It's got some enforcement issues, as, as I mentioned. Um, it's got, Mr. Chairman Cole, I know what the 20 of us did back in January was to get a 72-hour rule where we get, get uh, amendments in, in place early. This violates that. And that's a, that's a problem going forward, a huge problem, because that's not the process that we, uh, I think, is fair to everybody. Again, it's not a Democrat or Republican. It's an American uh, democracy, that, the way it ought to work. But thank each one of you for the time. I'm not going to be the dead horse anymore. Um, and, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I appreciate that. A um, couple of things. We're getting ready to recess. So, number one, uh, we have three votes on the floor. Uh, I would advise the witnesses, none of you are excused yet. Your testimony is still here. So, immediately after the third vote, we'd request.